morning. Uh, today we're gonna work on cleaning up this hub. And for some reason, I lost my other hub. I hope I didn't throw that thing away by accident. We're gonna test out a new tool today. It's called a needler or a descaler. That's what it looks like. All right, let's get a bunch of needles on it. Harbor Freight, 29 bucks. All it does is vibrate. But if you're ever working on parts like this, I'm gonna get this to spin around before you can see what I'm doing. Uh, when you get to cleaning things and you don't, you're not using your blast booth, you wanna be able to get into some of these recesses because uh, you can't get a wire wheel in there. So I'm gonna give it a shot and see what happens. All right, about to get noisy in here. Check this out. Knocked all that old rust off, paint and everything else. That's not bad. That only took a couple seconds. I'm gonna get to work. Yeah. You better be wearing hearing protection. All right? That's gonna make you go deaf if you don't. Tell you what, if you don't have a needler in your toolbox, you're making stuff too hard for yourself. I can't tell you how much of this crust and grime ended up on the floor and on my workbench just for a couple of minutes of, of work with this tool. Check those out. Now, you don't want to use this obviously on soft metal, something that's cast like that, engine block, whatever to vibrate off whatever's uh, you need to get off. You see that? Get all the big chunks off. Got into those little tight areas. I'm a firm believer in that. I only have about 10 minutes on this using the scaler, okay? To get into the little tight spots in here. Very short work of that. Next thing I did, Got to have a roll lock disc, folks. Make sure you keep your air tools oiled. It's great for cleaning off these kinds of surfaces, knocking down some of the high spots. What else? Make sure you're wearing gloves, glasses, and all that kind of stuff. Air. Blow that stuff out. When you get it clean, a little brake cleaner. Spray that on there. It'll flash off. It'll get all the grease and crap off, and this thing's practically ready for paint. However, comma. I gotta replace the stud, so we're gonna do that. Now, in order to get the uh, wheel stud out of this hub, uh, we're gonna use a press. I've got a, uh, I don't know what this is, a 12 ton hydraulic bottle jack type press for the shop. Um, here, I'll back out, you can see it. It's a simple Harbor Freight uh, unit. It's cheap, and uh, really for the kind of work that we're doing on these flat fenders, that's all you need. As a matter of fact, if there's anything that you, uh, really want to invest in right off the get-go if you're going to try to restore one of these things. It's a good quality air compressor. Um, you're going to need it and some tools uh, to go with that and uh, this press. Uh, you use this thing for everything. I'm talking about U-joints, studs, I mean you name it. There's a lot of things that are press fitted into place on this Jeep. Uh, bushings and things of that nature. So the tool is uh, it's, it's more than earned its pay and I highly recommend you go out and get one. I think uh, Harbor Freight has a, um, a, uh, a, what's coming up here, Labor Day or something, or I don't know. But anyhow, they got a, a sidewalk sale going on, so and I believe it's next week. And check it out, there's going to be a lot of coupons. Anyhow, uh, let's see if we can get this pressed out. Now, set the camera up here. What I've done was, is I've got this uh, pin on the, uh, that's on the jack directly on the stud that's busted, and I've got an impact uh, quality socket underneath here and basically going to press this right into that socket and drop it out okay here we go where 
Wear your safety glasses. That's how you make short work of something. Right tools for the job every time. Don't skimp because you can get hurt if you try to you know, do some kind of weird bubble mod. All right, more to follow. Installing the new stud is just reversed. Same procedure, same location of the uh, socket and everything. You just rotate the hub over, insert the new one. Uh, make sure you got the right one in there. I'll explain that in a minute. I'm just gonna simply drive that in. New studs in. Now remember, this particular hub, you see the L? Now I get my camera set up straight. Left handed threads. Two of your wheels are left handed threads. So make sure that when you put the stud in, you got the right kind of stud that's going in there. All right, that hub is uh, pretty much uh, back together and good to go. Uh, we're going to get it cleaned up a little bit further, get some primer on it, paint it, and then install it onto the Jeep. All right, that's it for the hub. So it's not too bad. Better than it was by a long shot. Anyhow, that's about all there is to that one. Simple. I spent maybe I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes on that one, getting it cleaned up and, uh, you know, painted and everything, so, all right, go do yours. Now I got to go find out where my other hub is, because I think I lost it, folks. Have a good day, and uh, you know the deal. Get out there and work on your Jeeps today. It's beautiful. And if it's not, close your door and then uh, work in the garage. See ya.